little front hub, which powers the sun headlights and of course tail light and they're wired together and also wired into that circuitry is a battery system that has a USB port that you can use to uh, charge your phone or run some other accessories and we did and that's self-charging right this is this generates okay generate generates six volts and uh, and that will that will run the lights all the time that you're rolling and then there's a little capacitance in the lights themselves so they'll stay on long enough for a stoplight or you know an intersection even while you're not rolling uh, but something you don't need to turn on turn off or recharge but to power accessories you do need uh, uh, there's a li lithium battery in there that that picks up additional I guess you would say additional uh, current from from the hub and one thing that is unique about this particular bike that we don't do normally is we weld a little tab onto the head tube and then machine this bracket to bring the light up and forward so you don't have so much wheel shadow if you mount the light back here and keep it too low on a long wheelbase with this kind of uh, fork offset you get such a wheel shadow in there so, and then uh, the Terrasaco glide flex uh, the little teardrop bearing the steer stopper again designed into the frame the the threaded boss is is actually welded into the frame too and I might mention too that the wiring between the front light and the rear is internal it runs through the tube the top tube and exits here this is a tubeless rack. I said to start from front to rear, but I guess I'm getting a little uh, out of order here. But anyway, tubeless rack, and then we built this uh, rack adapter to adapt it to the accessory boss we weld into the frame here. Give another fender mount location uh, for the for the rear fender. And then the frame is this is a chrome ollie steel frame, which we do build them in aluminum as well. And, but it has the Paragon rear, rear slider dropouts, and so we can put this insert slider in for the uh, roll-off speed hub, which this has, as you can see. So it has the anti-rotation, the long s slot in here uh, for the shifting mechanism. And uh, yeah. And the seat configuration. I mean, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yeah. the different types of seats that you might have? Well, we have this is our standard mesh seat, which would be the most common. We also have the sling mesh, which, at a glance, looks much the same. Uh, the sling mesh, instead of having a plastic pan that sits underneath the foam cushion, it is actually a webbing suspension, more of a hammock style suspension underneath there. This is an aluminum frame uh, that supports the mesh and the pan, whereas the sling mesh is a chrome only frame. Uh, the sling mesh is actually just a little bit lighter. Uh, these, have, these frames we bring in uh, from overseas, the seat frame. The sling mesh is built in-house, uh, currently out of stock. There's not enough of us to go around to get everything done, but yeah. And then, yeah, the, the sprint brace foot tube for recline and uh, the recline is independent actually i'll just take the seat off here it's qr pins i've pulled two qr pins back there and then two underneath here and the whole seat just lifts off on the v-clamp which the v-clamp can travel 12 inches fore and aft and it's got two locations here so you can really get all the adjustment travel and, and it just sits on these on these little saddles here on these bolt heads machine down bolt heads and the QR pin is what captures it that also is the pivot so that's a real slick clean simple way to uh, to install it way slicker seat. than what I'm used to <laughs> and you can take the seat off on as long as you remember which hole you were in on the recline back here on the flute tubes you take the seat off and it right remembers back where, it remembers right back where you went it's exactly right that's exactly right 